today I'm going to be starting my April wrap up. Today's also the bookmobile, so I need to turn these books in and um, I'm so disheveled. And um, so I have a bunch of books that are coming today. I know I said I wasn't going to get any more, but um, these ones are strictly for my May themed month, which will be sequels. And so it's the second book in a series that I've already read. So I'll be starting those ones in April. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is Sword Play by Linda Joy Singleton. This one is book four in the Seer series. And this one was, um, like the other ones, they, it had like a beginning where, you know, it talked about the problem and then there was the middle where she had to try to figure out what the problem, how to solve the problem. And then of course the end, she solved it. But again, they're still trying to figure out the cure to help the grandma. I just love this series. It's so complete, if that makes sense, because there's of course, you know, the, the stray stories where, you know, life happens like every day, things happen that you have to deal with, but there's an underlining um, problem that needs to be solved. And I cannot wait to read book five, which ugh, I wish I could remember what it was, but um, I will be getting it soon. The next book I want to talk about is Crier's Cross by Lisa McMahon. And this one is a very strange story. The only books that I've read from Lisa McMahon is the Wake series. So this is the only kind of dialogue um, I was used to. But this one is completely different. Um, in the Wake series, it has nothing to do with like monsters or paranormal or anything like that. And this book was rather creepy. I wasn't expecting it because again, I've, I read the, the Wake series, so it wasn't, um, I didn't have any ideas of how Lisa was going to write in her other books. So with this one, um, the picture kind of gives you a, not, not a permanent, what is it called? A hint, a hint. It gives you a hint. So basically, um, the main character, which her name is Kendall, she lives in a very small, like, hick kind of town in Montana where, you know, everybody knows everybody. There's like, like, I don't know, 200 people or something like that in the town. So it's very, very small. And there's farms and, and um, the people have been living there for generations. There is a secret, though, that is held by two of the oldest um, residents in this town called Crier's Cross. And um, the secret that they keep doesn't get told to until towards the end of the book. And the secret is why there are two missing children in this extremely small town. Where did they go? And um, you need to follow Kendall and her OCD disorder and um, you have to follow her and find out, you know, how she copes with um, these missing kids and a new family moves in and how she deals with them and what happens to her at the end of the book. It was um, a very quick read and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four or five stars on Goodreads. And then we'll go back to the Wake series. Um, the first one is about, what's her name again? Jan Janie. The first one's about Janie and she has a, a problem where she can physically be in people's dreams. And she doesn't know anything about this dream world. She doesn't know how to stop it. She doesn't know why she can see people's dreams. And then you get to the middle book and she now knows what it's called or what um, it's called for to her. They call it dream catching. And there's a person that she meets that kind of gives her some guidance on, on being a dream catch catcher and what it entails. 
And then with the third book, it kind of wraps it up what her what she chooses to do in her life whether she wants to be a dream catcher or whether she can stop watching people's dreams how it's going to affect her future and overall i i liked this the overall um <laughs> i don't know why i can't think right now um i did like the series i think i gave each book four or five stars each and then overall i would give it a four star for the entire series because um, I did like the way it was written. Some people complain about the timekeeping. Can you see that? Like 4 uh, 23 a.m., 9 20, and then it goes to 9 33. It's almost like a diary entry, the, the way it's read. So um, every every chance Janie gets, she's constantly looking at the time because because of the uh, the dream catching, she loses herself um, during these moments. If someone's sleeping next to her, she'll end up not going to sleep, but being almost catatonic and in a coma at that point because she's in someone else's dream. So she's paralyzed um, for the most part. I mean, she can kind of get places like crawl but all of her senses are blocked and um, I just thought it was fascinating and I did enjoy the timekeeping so that way I could follow along with her daily um, not ritual or routine but like every every step of the way I knew exactly what time it was how long she was in a dream for um, how long it took for her to get out of that dream and what she did after that so I really enjoyed the um, the timekeeping aspect. And then the last book I want to talk about is Perks Being a Wallflower. I really liked this book. Um, if you watch my videos, you know I don't really read very many contemporaries. And the reason why that is is because I'm always worried it's going to be gushy and like full of like happy lovey-dovey stuff, which is, it's nice sometimes. And sometimes it's like gagarama. And then other times the the content's too heavy. I don't want to read about really emotionally heavy things because I, I like my fiction and I like being separated from the real world into my reading dream world. I like being separated from there. But this one is really fun. This is about a boy named Charlie who's 15 who starts his freshman year at a high school and um, the actual book is just basically letters that he's written to a stranger. You don't find out who the stranger is, but he writes to this stranger as if he is writing a letter to a diary. He, you know, he, he tells this person um, everything that's going on in his life and he jots it all down. And it's an entire year, so his entire freshman year is in this one book. And it's everything he does, you know, not monotonous things like, oh, I went to lunch and I ate tuna fish and I went home and, and, you know, cleaned my closet out. Nothing like that, but lots of fun um, things that he has learned along his, along the way. So um, he starts school, he doesn't know anybody, and then he meets some friends, and then what happens with those friends throughout the entire um, freshman year? And then the ending is really sweet because overall the, the the writing to this stranger is a kind of like a lesson learned. Um, he's grown a lot since the beginning and I just thought it was such a funny story and very endearing and Charlie is so sweet and um, I mean he's so naive you know and cute and I just I just really I liked his character and I loved his friends for the way they treated him. They didn't treat him like an outsider or that he was dumb or, you know, they, they brought him into their group right away and they, you know, tried to show him the ropes and and um, teach him what, you know, what their kind of life was about. And he got to experiment and he truly learned what it was like to, you know, make friends and, and what you do with friends and how um, you grow as a human being and I just I thought it was such a cute story I really really liked it and I gave it a five 
out of five stars. Um, so that's it, and I will continue in two weeks when I do the next round of books that I've read, so I will see you later. Bye. All right, we are back with the April wrap-up. Now, the first half of the, um, of the month, I read four or five, something like that, four or five books, and then the, the rest of the month, I've read eight. So overall, I read 14 this month, which kind of makes me sad because I was trying to get two other books done, but I just ran out of time which is kind of okay because they're sequels and that will be good for this month because this month's theme is sequels month and I will do my TBR after I go to the bookmobile. Um, so let's get started. And the first book I wanna talk about is Hourglass by Myra McIntyre. This book is about a girl named Emerson Cole who can see um, not dead people, but past people, because this book is a time-traveling book, a mystery. It was very good. Um, Emerson lives with her brother, Thomas, and her sister-in-law, Drew, in a house in a small town that they are um, renovating. Not the, the brother is renovating the entire town, making it um, more authentic to where it used to look back in the day. Anyways, so Thomas hires a man named Michael who has said that he knows how to help Emerson with her problem of seeing the dead people. And he works for Hourglass, and so that's how we get the title. Um, the book is very good. I liked the fact that um, it skips from this time to the past. I thought that was very interesting how they go about doing it through like a portal and how all these people, Michael included, all have these different powers. Um, not kind of like X-Men powers, but all of the powers have to do with some type of time um, warping or what have you. And uh, so it was very interesting. I think I gave this book a four. It was good, but at some times it was a little irritating just because um, she she falls head over heels in love with Michael. She doesn't know him. And so it's one of those love at first sights kind of romance. And, um, and so she does some silly things in order to, you know, keep the, the romance alive. And not only that, but there's like other parts of her where she's jealous and, I don't know, can you be jealous over a person you don't really know? Anyway. Um, so that was the first book. Again, I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book that I read was 172 Hours on the Moon. This book was so good. I, I'm pretty sure I gave it five out of five stars. It's about three different kids. Um, there's one from Sweden, one from Japan, and one from France. Two girls and a boy. And they all enter this contest either um, on... Like, they were forced to enter the contest, the Swedish girl was, and the other two actually wanted to join this contest to get away from uh, the life that they're living now. And um, it's a worldwide contest, so anybody who is between the ages of 12 and 17, I believe, were able to enter the contest and, um, and go and land on the moon with, you know, like five real astronauts. Basically these teenagers get picked up and they get trained on how to you know wear a space suit and what to do in emergency situations and they finally get up to the moon and all hell breaks loose and it's just so creepy what happens there i definitely recommend anybody to read this book it 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 was so good they have little pictures throughout the book as well. Like this is the the moon surface, and um, here's one with a uh, what are they called? Not a lunar. Lun no. Anyways, you know those little motorized 
scooter things that they have on the moon. So there's pictures that go along with the story as well to kind of give you, you know, an idea of what's going on. Um, it was really fast paced. I kind of, I don't know, the, the Swedish girl kind of annoyed me just because you know, she was really mean to her parents. But other than that, the book was really good. I liked it. All right, next on the list is Poison Study by Maria V. Schneider. I read this all, oh, the whole thing, um, last Friday. And, man, I tell you, I know I put this on my, on my Friday reads that I was going to read it, which I did. And I know that I told everybody that I was scared to read this because it had, you know, castles in it. I don't know why I said that, because I, I like watching shows about, you know, castles and medieval times and all those other things. But for some reason, I thought this was going to be, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I was just daunted by reading this. It, but when I was reading it, it was just, it was so, so good. So her name is... Yelena. Yelena is, when you first start the book, Yelena's in the dungeon and she's being charged, well not back, back in the day they didn't say charged, but she's awaiting her execution for killing a man. That's not a spoiler. She does kill somebody and um, there's rules in, in the place that she lives where the next person in line to be executed can have the option of being the commander's um, poison test, like tester for his food. And this land doesn't have any kings anymore. The commander has taken over and has brought peace to the world where this is, you know, at. And um, so she starts training on how to be a poison tester. And there's a bit of a, what was his name? A romance between her and Valak. Valak is his name. So Valak is kind of like the commander's personal, well he's like a bodyguard so he's his assassin. He also is kind of like the um, the person that the commander goes to uh, to see you know if he should do something so his advisor as well. And so Valak and Yelena have a, a definite a professional relationship at the beginning and then at the end it starts getting more intimate and um, just everything that's going on on how the commander is um, being forced to allow the southerners to come in and trade with them when they've been cut off for the longest time is just intriguing and how they go about doing it and I don't want to give anything away with um, spoilers but this book was just amazing and the way that they I don't know, I can't, I'm having a hard time explaining anything today. Basically, there's poison testing, there is castles, there are, is fight scenes, there is magic. So it's kind of like The Princess Bride, but not. It was really good. The next book that I read was Croak by Gina DeMaico. Oh, I loved this book. Another five out of five stars. This book is about a girl named Lex who is, for the last couple years, have just been worse and worse behaviorally. And so his, her parents are like at wit's end. They don't know what to do with her. They're tired of her being expelled. Um, what she does at school is she like beats up literally everybody. She has no preference on who she punches in the face. And the principal wants to like kick her out of school forever and her parents are like please please you know so many times that they, they you know they've gone to the office please don't don't kick her out this time we swear we'll fix her and so the dad decides that he's going to call his brother and have his brother come and pick her up and his, his brother lives on a farm and so the dad thinks that this will do her good to go and like physically have some kind of labor where she's got a schedule and she's got to like muck stalls and all that stuff and so they've decided that that's what they're going to do. She meets her uncle and he is completely different than what she expects. Her uncle's name is Mort and basically they go to a town called Croak and this town is kind of secret. It's in between 
um, rolling hills, and so when tourists come through, they're um, confused on where they're at. But it's a it's a place for grim reapers, and they train them up, and people go with. There's a killer, the ones that have that takes the soul from the body, and then there's the colors, C U L L E R. The colors um, take the bodies or the the souls, and they put them in a spherical um, holding tank, sort of, and then they transfer them to the afterlife. And it was just so interesting how they come about, how these Grimms are chosen, how they're found, how they live their life, what they do on their free time. Um, it was just a lot of fun to read, and I can't wait to get to the next book because towards the end, I, I could I could tell what was happening, and um, and I was right when I found out who the bad guy was in the book. So it's exciting to uh, find out what happens next. All right, next I I, I need to hold these tighter. This is Touched by Sin Blog. I just finished this one up uh, a couple days ago. And this is about a boy named Nick Cross. So Nick is born able to see the future. The future changes constantly because of his actions um, with you know, people or actions just with the setting around him. If he does not follow the script that his, his mom calls it the script, if he doesn't follow the directions, um, you know, word for word, letter for letter, then he can change the future. And he's had to deal with this his entire life. So he, um, he has this day where he's supposed to go and save a little girl and he meets another girl. What, what's her name? Taryn. He meets Taryn and instead of saving the little girl he helps Taryn instead which completely changes his entire future and um, and then he finds out what that his his future seeing is actually a curse called a touch and she is the one who gives out touches. Well her grandma does. She's um, in the training of giving out touches, curses, and it's all his mom's fault because the mom got the curse and through her pregnancy gave it to him. And so the entire book you have to, you know, go with him along his adventure on how to, you know, change the future and, and what repercussions happen when he doesn't follow the script. And it was, I was really scared at times that he was just gonna, you know, not make it. And at the end, it was so confusing. The last chapter or two, I was, I was, I was with him. So the entire book, you know, it, it's it's shown in in a, not pictures because it's all words, but you get the sense that he's always, you know, scared that if he doesn't make the script perfect, that his his future is going to be lost. And at the end. I was just as mind boggled as he was because I didn't know what was going on and neither did he. And it was it was a really good book. I believe I gave this one four out of five. Not sure. All right. Next we come to A Vicious by V. E. Schwab. This book took me so long to read. I know people are like, this is the best book ever. And I did give it four out of five stars. It was a good tale. It's about Eli and Victor, yeah, Eli and Victor. They're friends in college. They decide to experiment on the afterlife and they have this hypothesis that if you can be brought back from the dead that you will have an extraordinary power and you'll become an EO. And um, so they experiment with it. They both have their, um, what is it called? near-death experience and they both get their powers but with these powers they are fighting <laughs> fighting against each other for the next 10 years so it starts off with them in college and then there is a, a break of 10 years between these two and then they come back together 
and they fight some more. And I think the reason why I didn't like this book, I, I didn't give it a 5 out of 5, is just because I hated Eli so much. And the fact that Serena was just there helping him, her that, that was like the best evil duo. They were both horrible people and um, I just could not stand them. And I was rooting for Mitch and Victor and um, what was the sister's name? S Sydney. The whole time I was like, please, please have a happy ending. I cannot stand this. And that is the reason why I gave it four out of five stars, just because I just, I despise Eli. Uh, Victoria Schwab just did such a great job at making a villain because he was the ultimate villain. He drove me crazy. And so I could only read the book in sections, like little tiny bites. And the cool thing too is that each chapter was super short. They were all about two to four pages long. So I was able to take a breather and then go to another book um, so I could decompress from the anger from him. The next book I want to talk about is Joyland by Stephen King. This is a book about Devin Jones who decides to take a job at Joyland Amusement Park. I think I spoke a little bit about this on my Friday Reads, but it is kind of like a Coney Island amusement park, but less well known. So basically, Devin meets a whole bunch of friends at this amusement park. He is told by the landlady that he lives with that the haunted house at the amusement park is actually haunted by a girl that was killed there. Her throat was slit open um, during one of the darkest parts of the the ride, and he's just intrigued by this this haunted girl and um, and the killing story. And so when his friends go off to college, he pulls one of them aside and goes, "Hey, let's let's look up and research and see how you know the killer got away and and." what um, what happened, like what really happened. And so with the rest of the book, you find out who the killer is, how it happened, and what happens with the amusement park and Devin Jones. And um, it was really good. I, I, <laughs> I'm not having a very good time making all these things. You get the point, right? All right. <sighs> this book. I could make an entire video with just this book in it. This is Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn. And if you want a spoiler review on just this book, leave a comment down below so we can discuss in detail how much this book drove us crazy. Let's start at the beginning, okay? There is a man named Nick. Dunn and his wife Amy Elliott Dunn and they are on their fifth wedding anniversary when this book takes place and um, they are both crazy they're both crazy and at the beginning I I was rooting for Nick and then and then I was rooting for Amy and then I was rooting for Nick and then at the end I just wanted to kill them both I, I I don't know how to describe this book without spoiling it. So I'll just leave it at this. This is a murder mystery book. Do you want to know who the murderer is? I did too. And then you want to know what's wrong with them? I did too. And then the ending? Let me tell you, the ending is going to make you go crazy. It made me go crazy. I hated this ending. I get it 4.75 stars because this ending pissed me off. It did. So that was Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. And I also read a, a Kendall book, a novella, when I went camping at the beginning of the month. Show me the picture. There we go. There we go. Shadow by Amanda Sun. And again, this is, I'm pretty sure this is still free at Amazon. So this is the 0.5, this happens before ink. And then Rain comes out really soon. I cannot wait to read that book. But this 
this was just about, um, I can't remember their names and I don't have the uh, thingamabobs. Toto, Tomohiro and Katie Green. Okay, so it talks about what happens before Katie goes to Japan to stay with her aunt. Um, we know how she deals with her mother's uh, death and why she didn't stay with her grandparents and why she had to go to, with her aunt to Japan. And it also shows you when Tomohito was getting the bad dreams and how that pertains to him having the curse of, um, of his ancestors and how he can uh, you know, go about making his drawings come to life. It was only 90 pages, I believe, and it was, I mean, for a novella, it was really good. It was informative, and it was nice to see how those characters started off before they met each other in Japan. So, that was it. And then I will have my, uh, my TBR posted later on today as well. Thanks for watching. This was my... April wrap-up. Bye!